So what is sim, sim swapping? It's an attack where um, you basically steal someone else's phone number to like bypass 2FA or things like that by mm -hmm. receiving like their text messages and other things that they might use to authenticate. Right, and how would you, how, let, let's say that you were targeting the head of a company and you found their phone number, you ran it through uh, an identifier that told you it was with a certain carrier, and then you did some research to find their basic information. How would you go about performing a SIM swapping attack? Um, I actually don't know too much about how they're actually executed. You call so, the freaking yeah. phone company. You can do that? <laughs> nice. What? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So the way that SIM swapping accounts works, uh, SIM swapping attacks work is you basically figure out like which carrier that person mm. is using, you find their basic information, and then you put on your best like old lady voice and you call so just and you say like, hello, I need to make a change. And you, you read all the information out. You pretend to be someone who's authorized on the account or you, you pretend to be that person themselves. I don't know why we're attacking an old lady today, but that's who we're going after. That's who's going down. <laughs> um, and you know, we'd be like, all right, my name's Janet and I need you to move my phone over to this new card or my, my new phone. And they would take your old SIM card, invalidate it, and then move your number over to a new SIM card if it was lost, <laughs> stolen, whatever else. It happens so often that the verification isn't that great. It's kind of, it depends on the carrier and it depends on like what mood the person who takes your phone call is in that day, really? Like, yeah. um, so this is a big vulnerability because it's infrastructure and people depend on this. Um, but with a single phone call, you can trick an employee into switching this over and causing all of your, you know, like 2FA resets if you're using text messages to now go to the attacker, hmm. which is a really big threat um, because they can reset everything you have um, and make it super easy to get into a lot of your primary accounts. Yikes. So that's why I don't recommend um, text-based or SMS-based 2FA because of this attack. But now the FCC is proposing some new rules to make it a little bit harder to do this. So if you want to check into what they are proposing, you know, it's basically going to be some requirements around making it harder for an unknown uh, party to do this without some sort of verification that makes sense. Because right now, there's no rules around this. You know, it's yeah. all just a policy set up by that particular carrier. So some carriers are probably going to be much more vulnerable than others because there's no real standard for this. So I personally think this is a good idea because, you know, we encourage people to use 2FA all the time, but this vulnerability is really not that hard to execute if you've got some time and you've got uh, a good amount of information about that person, like their biographical information, where they live, and some other stuff that can enable you to answer a security question or two. So in, in fact, like there's often not security questions required in order to do this. So it's good to see that there's something that's taking shape there to make this a little harder to pull off. Hmm. That just goes to show like, it's more about like hacking the people behind this than like actual computers or things like that. Just with social engineering, it's more just like tricking them into handing over this information or doing sketchy things for you. Exactly. Exactly. And like, what would you recommend instead of like a text based um, uh, authentication for logging in if you're going to be using 2FA? Um, I'm not sure actually. How about honest. a phone or a hardware um, token? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hardware tokens are pretty interesting. It's just like a piece of hardware that you can carry on you that allows you to authenticate stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's so also uh, like a so either a 2FA token or just your phone using something like Google Authenticator. Both of those would be a way better way of doing this. Of course, then you run the risk of needing a you know, backup key or making sure you never only have one thing that can log you in just in case you lose your phone or something like that. Hmm. But it's a lot harder to like sneakily like grab someone's phone and like find their authentication code and then it expires after a certain period of time. That's way harder to do than and involves like physical access compared to, you know, just remotely being able to grab someone's information and trick some company into switching their stuff over. So I'm glad to see that this is um, a little bit more locked down or potentially will be in the future. Okay, so again, that's all I think we have time for this week. Um, I want to thank everybody who asked great questions for our Q&A stream, including um, Potato Boy, who is our winner of a $100 Hack5 gift card. And if you want to win as well, you can submit a question for our Q&A stream either on the YouTube channel or on my Twitter, and you'll be automatically entered to win a Hack5 gift card. So we hope that uh, you'll join us next time and potentially win, as well as ask us some great questions. Alex, thank you very much for being on the stream today. Of course. And we will see you all next time. Bye.